Excellence Monsieur Moussa Faki, président de la Commission de l'Union africaine. Monsieur le vice-président de la Commission de l'Union africaine. Honorable Ambassador Salim. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs de la Commission et des de, de, de membres du Conseil exécutif. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres des États membres. Mesdames, Messieurs les commissaires de l'Union africaine. Mesdames, Messieurs les ambassadeurs de chefs de mission. Mesdames, Messieurs les représentants du secteur privé, de la société civile et des médias, distingués invités. Mesdames, Messieurs, tout protocole observé. C'est un grand honneur pour moi de participer à la 32e session ordinaire du Conseil exécutif de l'Union africaine et de prononcer mon premier discours lors de ce sommet qui porte sur le thème très important de remporter la lutte contre la corruption, une voie durable pour la transformation de l'Afrique. Comme vous le savez, Madame, Monsieur, promouvoir la transformation structurelle de l'Afrique est une priorité de la CEA. Nous nous félicitons d'avoir mis en place des mécanismes de soutien pour mieux accompagner les gouvernements africains dans la mise en œuvre de leurs politiques et programmes de développement durable, dans la bonne réalisation des objectifs dessinés par les agendas 2030 et 2063. Certes, nombre de nos pays demeurent dans une impasse. Malheureusement, certains flux tels que la corruption qui sévissent dans plusieurs de nos pays africains constituent un frein majeur aux aspirations de transformation et de diversification et de développement durable. Permettez-moi, honorable invité ministre, de comparer la corruption à un cancer qui tue à petit feu les politiques, les économies et les sociétés africaines. Et la seule cure durable à cette maladie, c'est à nous de trouver et de la définir. Tout récemment, et ça a été répété par son Excellence M. Moussa Farki, le président de la Commission, les paroles qui ont été prononcées par le président des États-Unis. Mais j'aimerais vous rappeler quelques autres paroles qui ont été prononcées il y a une décennie. C'était le président Sarkozy qui parlait ainsi de l'Afrique. Le drame de l'Afrique, c'est que l'homme africain n'est pas assez entré dans l'histoire. Le paysan africain qui, depuis des millénaires, vit avec les saisons, dont l'idéal de vie est d'être en harmonie avec la nature. Ne connaît que l'éternel recommencement du temps, rythmé par la répétition sans fin des mêmes gestes et des mêmes paroles. Dans cet imaginaire où tout recommence toujours, il n'y a de place ni pour l'aventure humaine, ni pour le progrès. Je crois que quand nous nous réunissons ici pour parler de la corruption, nous avons l'impression que nous, a, nous sommes dans cet imaginaire où tout recommence toujours, car la question de la corruption, nous en parlons depuis très longtemps. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers, over the past few months, I've been living in Addis. I have experienced the heartbeat of one of Africa's most vibrant capitals. But when new leaders of the continent descend on Addis, it gives it a whole new flavor but also a lot of expectation. I am indeed privileged to be standing here today as part of this Addis Yearly Symphony. And as we talk about symphonies and talk about corruption and our struggle for development, I want to take a moment to recognize, as we have just done recently, another one of Africa's greats, Hugh Masakela, who passed away, fighting, for cor fighting against corruption, fighting for freedoms in all its forms. We come here also today to remind ourselves of the struggles of our, for, the, our forefathers waged to set us free. We come here to recommit to building our continent and the Union and to re reaffirm that we can and indeed emerge as a stronger continent. But as surely as the sun rises on the continent, the scourge of corruption continues to dim its light. And it is in that respect that we cannot but congratulate and welcome the fact that the African Union has decided to take the theme of anti-corruption, fighting corruption, as the theme of the summit. The youth of Africa wait for a decision on how we can actually combat this scourge that ensures that Africa can no longer grow, that Africa continues to remain a continent that is plagued by illness. How can we get the Africa we want if most of our mothers cannot have babies in safe conditions because governments 
cannot afford medicines and you need to pay for to get a service that you deserved. How can we get the Africa we want when women cannot have access to land because of corruption? How can we get the Africa we want if collectively we let our most precious assets, the youth, drown in foreign waters because their thirst for freedom cannot be quenched because of the corruption that exists on our continent? When our youth no longer believe in their leaders, when our youth no longer believe in our institutions, we cannot get the Africa we want. Corruption, we must admit, has held us back for far too long. The injustice of corruption brought to life within our institutions is more powerful than any other injustice that we face as a continent. It is an injustice that grows on the continent and clearly is an injustice that can be taken care of on the continent. Africa has recently embraced two very important transformational agendas, Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063. And added to that, as the Chair of the African Union has said, the agenda to reform the Union. As you are well aware, successful implementation of these agendas requires substantial financial resources, most, most of which must necessarily be mobilized from within the continent. What this means is that the continent cannot afford to continue to suffer from the kinds of financial leakages that it has contended with over the past several years through various forms of corrupt acts and practices. The theme of this summit is therefore admittedly most appropriate and timely as Africa must indeed win the fight against the scourge of corruption for it to be able to leverage various opportunities for economic transformation and diversification. Corruption is a phenomenon that has been with humankind since the beginning of creation. It is therefore not some recent deviation from public morality. However, placing the fight against corruption at the top of our continental organization is a step in the right direction, considering that nearly half of the population on the continent believes that our governments have either failed or been unable to properly address the complex and wide-ranging impacts of corruption. In 2015, for example, the Global Corruption Barometer estimated the ratio of Africans who perceive corruption to be on the rise at about 58%. Similarly, in 2017, the Moibrahim Mo Index of African Governance reported a large deterioration in corruption and bureaucracy. Across the African region, over the past five years, there has been a decrease from 44% in 2012 to 37% in 2016, which is about a seven, seven percentage point decline in corruption. We need to reverse that trend, and we hope that with the African Union placing corruption at the top of its agenda, we can actually make progress on that. It has been estimated that an increase of corruption by about one index point reduces a country's GDP by about 0.13 percentage points. This is important because we have about 40% of Africans today still living below the poverty line. So the relationship between corruption and poverty is intrinsically linked. We cannot get an Africa we want if we cannot ensure that we gain every percentage point in our production process to ensure that we are improving prosperity for all. For instance, we observe in a few countries that the 12 percent decline in Guinea-Bissau's GDP was mostly attributed to corruption. The period coincided with, and when we talk about corruption, we also talk about institutional weaknesses. In the case of Guinea-Bissau, coup d'etats, which were characterized by political instability, weakened administration, public inefficiencies, and public financial management. In many other countries, we have gone through this, a similar struggle. We have seen that improvements in governance, for example, in Angola, have contributed to an increase in foreign direct investment of about 5.9% of GDP in 2013, up from 2.9% 2 in 2011, precisely because of stability and better governance. Many other African countries are doing well and improving in their governance index. We know today that many African countries are always among the top 10 countries in the Doing Business Index. We are aware that corruption is important, fighting corruption is important, and there are a lot of efforts that are doing that, but we need to do more. Having five countries in the top 10 of the Doing Business Index makes us happy, but we also realize and recognize that we do not have any African countries in the top 20%. Therefore, we believe that as we work, as we work towards improving our corruption and governance indexes on the continent, we need to do more 
We cannot content ourselves with recent successes or short successes. In fact, at the ECA, we are deliberately working to reiterate these milestones of work that need to be done. In this regard, I would like to recall the commendable efforts that have been taken to develop more rigorous macroeconomic management in institutions across the continent, public financial management institutions, central bank institutions, the establishment of parliamentary public accounts committees that has improved oversight over legislation. Countries are increasingly demonstrating more transparency in monetary policy and improving the auditing of public funds. But see, not only improving the auditing of public funds, but also allowing for the public and particularly our civil society to have access and question the use of public resources. I think the uh, chair of the commission has also spoken about the pain and the scourge of corruption in public service and what we need to do for that. So this is just an iteration. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen despite these inroads, corruption continues to hurt. We have also, and we repeatedly talk as a continent, about the work on illicit financial flows that we have done. The question is, what do we do next? How many countries will decide in this year of fighting corruption that they will resolutely sign the FATF agreements? How many countries in Africa will ensure that transfer of resources outside the continent is legislated and transparent? We need to go beyond talking about our reports and the impact of fighting corruption on the continent. We need to actually start proving and showing results because there is a youth out there that is waiting and looking and hoping that in this fight against corruption, we will be able to, as the chair also mentioned, put in place an effective continental free trade agreement, a free trade agreement that will allow for the movement of goods and services and people to places where they can actually finally get better prosperity. We know today that 82% of Africans travel and migrate within the continent looking for jobs. We also know today that trade within Africa provides much higher value added, provides more jobs, increases livelihoods, improves prosperity. If you put these two things together, the fight against corruption becomes a fight for jobs. It becomes a fight for youth. It becomes a fight for prosperity. We now have the Continental Free Trade Agreement as a tool to make that happen. But for that to be successful, we must ensure that our borders are open, that our customs unions work, that our taxes and taxation is effective. I think that this is what we talk about when we talk about the fight against corruption. We talk about the women at the border states who needs to sell her vegetable produce. We talk about those women who are trying to ensure that their services can actually serve all of Africa and not just the states and cities in which they live. In West Africa, for instance, it was reported that there are between two and three checkpoints every 100 kilometers around the corridor, and bribes are collected by customs unions, police, gendarmes, and uniform services that range from $2 to $23 per kilometer. This is what we mean when we talk about corruption. A young woman, a young girl cannot trade if the tax for trade, if the cost for trade on the continent is $23 per 100 kilometer. It is too expensive for her, and that is why we see our youth dying in the oceans, looking for a better life. We can, in effect, change that if we can win the fight against corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, and to finalize, what is ECA doing about this? ECA has been working with many countries over the past years. We have contributed to the Tabun Beki report. We are working on the a a African peer review mechanism. We are launching work on tax reform to ensure that we can increase collection of taxes. We are launching work to improve the administration and the governance of our pension funds to ensure that we can get more assets and more savings that we can turn into investments. But for that to happen, we are working with to set up PPP frameworks in many countries. This all requires that we ensure that these institutions have good governance, that there is corruption that can be identified and taken away from the system. ECA remains faithful to the union, and ECA commits, as I stand here today with me and the rest of the staff, to be collaborative, particularly with our work with the African Union, but also and most especially with the African Development Bank, whose leadership I salute, to ensure that all programs that are launched to fight corruption and to ensure that we are building a better union for our youth are going to be successful and we will give our utmost to ensure that they happen. Thank you very much for your attention.